Full disclosure, I am stealing this series wholesale from Karsten Grunquist. I love his series where he talks about what he watches each month and I want to do one of my own. So uh, Karsten, I am sorry <laughs> for stealing this, but uh, there's just always so many movies I watch each month that never inspire me to make a full video about them, but I could definitely say like a minute's worth of things about them. So I, it's just such a good format. Uh, Rasputin has been doing it about video games, so uh, check his stuff out too. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a little late, but I'm going back to October and I haven't even been watching that many movies and I wanna watch more, so I hope that this uh, series kinda inspires me to fill up my month so then I have more to talk about each month. And I'm gonna try leaving a little space for the poster here at the very least. Do a little editing this time. But um, October, I started off the month with the four Wes Anderson uh, rolled doll shorts. And uh, in order, this is what I liked, uh, the wonderful story of Henry Sugar the most, followed by Poison, followed by The Swan, followed by Rat Catcher. I think they're all super, you know, it's Wes Anderson, it's super well presented, very artistic and beautiful and all that. Uh, I do think this worked a little better than like Asteroid City and uh, The French Dispatch did for me. I've talked about this before in my Royal Tenenbaums video, but I think Wes Anderson has pushed his style a little to the point of self-parody and style over substance. And nowadays I'm such a substance guy. I, I want my films to hit me emotionally and, and tell me something that matters. And uh, when it came to Asteroid City and French Dispatch, they felt a bit, a bit uh, slight. I, I didn't feel like I got substance out of them. But with that said, I think this really, you know, artifice driven style worked better in the short format or at least in the Roald Dahl narrated format. I think it was very creative, if not like the most literal adaptation ever, but still very creative to have the characters speak the prose to the camera uh, and sort of guide us through the story. And I think it worked the best in Henry Sugar just because I felt like I experienced all these different uh, stories and characters and beats that you would in a feature, whereas the other two I, were maybe over too soon for me. But uh, Poison was awesome because it was Wes Anderson operating in tension, and you don't get to see him do tension much. You know, his stuff is usually a bit more grounded and light uh, and not, not so uh, intense. <laughs> and uh, that was fun to see. And The Swan was emotional. It, um, just a little confusing for me. I think my brain was a little checked out. And then the rat catcher, I really like the stage theater things of, you know, like having, you know, saying he's holding a ferret and it's not there. And all these little uh, cues and lighting cues and set cues were more theatrical than ever. And uh, it was just a blast to watch. And I, I feel like there's a world where Wes Anderson combined these all into a like French dispatch rolled doll style you know, uh, anthology, you know, cause I felt like Roald Dahl reading it was kind of a tertiary element. It didn't seem that important to have Ray, Ray Fiennes reading uh, the books to you. I felt like there could have been some connective tissue and like making Roald Dahl's life like his work, like presenting his life like that would be interesting. Uh, I could see like a Mishima sort of Roald Dahl movie by Wes Anderson where it's about his work and his life and kind of bridging them together and, and drawing the connections. Could have been exciting, but I think the shorts worked. It was fun to have one every day to watch. And uh, yeah, that, that was just a fun surprise because I felt like we already got a Wes Anderson movie this year. So to get the double uh, was a lot of fun. And uh, next, because Netflix recommended it, one of the only times a Netflix recommendation has like driven me to just watch a movie, but me and my friend Nick uh, uh, wa were watching the Gold Doll short and then it said Matilda and we're like, we should watch Matilda. So we played Matilda directed by Danny DeVito, which is a, <laughs> a strange thing you don't think about. I remember when I found that out in like high school, I was like, what? Like he made Matilda and he's directed all these other movies. But um yeah, talented guy. Matilda is filled with such whimsy and fun. It's got that sort of 90s charm and ad adventure feeling to it. You know, everything feels larger than life, you know, like the Iron Maiden and the principal's office and the chocolate cake scene are just so grand and they stuck with me so much, even though I haven't seen the movie in like 
I don't know, 15 years, no, even more, maybe like 18 years. Um, but yeah, it was just such a fun movie and it's so funny how over the top it is, you know, it's like her, her parents hate her so much that it's cruel, but it, it loops around to being so over the top that you can't take it seriously and it becomes very fun. And uh, same with like, I, I've compared it in my letterbox review, which I'm sure a lot of this series will be, we're just repeating what I said on letterbox essentially, but uh, I'm, uh, I compared it to Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, how Harry Potter is so hated by his family, they don't even want him to get mail, you know, from his perspective, he's like, uh, he's like, I just want a letter, and they're just <laughs> taking his letters away, he's like, but he just accepts that, he's like, this is how much they hate me, <laughs> it's just cruel, but it's so exaggerated, it works, because if you just watch a kid be neglected and abused it would not be funny but they they pushed it enough in both films but matilda was great um and then next i rewatched walk hard i rewatched a couple of favorites coming up but uh walk hard is one of my favorite comedies ever it's so funny some of the best jokes ever the sink gag where he keeps smashing more and more sinks when he's like in his down period where things are going bad he goes to a public bathroom and smashes every sink or the the scene where he's in the you know uh, rehab uh, going through withdrawal and he's like more blankets less blankets more and less blankets i, I know i'm just reciting jokes but they're so good and uh it's just so faithful and so well done it captures the biopic like cinematography and lighting so well and all these different like periods and uh you know that like shooting on film and like doing the black and white bob dylan stuff it's just so playful and charming and i'm like this movie should have ended music biopics at least the cliche hollywood ones and i can't believe that like a biopic as bad as Bohemian Rhapsody came out after this because it's just a self-parody at that point. I, you watch Walk Hard, it's like, did they watch Walk Hard as a reference for Bohemian Rhapsody? Because it's just that on the nose. And, and yeah, Walk Hard is just a great parody. And I think the jokes all land and it's just so over the top and ridiculous. And uh, yeah, I, I, I think I need to rewatch some other ones like Step Brothers and stuff, but I feel like Walk Hard stands head and shoulders above them as far as like filmmaking and presentation goes. It really put a lot of care into it. And the songs are great. The songs get in, in your head. A Beautiful Ride, the ending song is genuinely a great song. Um, and uh, next up, uh, we also rewatched uh, Freddy Got Fingered, which I already have a whole video on my channel gushing about it. I think it's so funny, so stupid, and such a great like prank on the studio. Such a great prank on people who wanted to just see a movie and they get, get whatever Freddy Gut Finger it is instead. I don't have more to say. I think it's really funny. I, I thought, I, I think it's so funny that he skateboards for no reason and he's good at it. Like Tom Green can just skateboard. So he put it in the movie and his character skateboards. Like it's so lame, but so funny. Uh, I just recommend Freddy Gut Fingered. For any night you're sitting around with friends looking for something funny to watch, Freddy Gut Fingered will not let you down. <laughs> it's so bad and so good and so amazing and so weird it, 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 i could see why people stormed out of it and um next we rewatch blood sport which is a jean-claude van damme movie that uh, i hadn't seen in years i think i saw it like five years ago and it, it didn't leave much of an impact on me then i think this time watching it with a bigger group of friends i kind of had more fun with it but I still think there's a much better examples of like 80s action movies and like fighting movies. Like I think Commando is a little different. It's a gun movie, I guess. But Commando is so over the top and fun in a way that I think makes it better. And then Jackie Chan, as far as like martial arts and fighting goes, is untoppable. Like Jackie Chan's like uh, early stuff in China is just so good that like you, 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 it's hard to watch any other movie with like where the fights are supposed to be like the the action and just see something that's not as well choreographed, not as well staged and, and shot. And it's just like Jackie Chan is in a league of his own, so it's unfair to compare perhaps. But yeah, Bloodsport's fun. It's a fun movie. It's good to watch with friends. The villain is so menacing for no reason. You know, he's just like such an asshole for no reason. And uh, that's always fun to just have a brainless 
villain who's just evil and uh to see him yeah you know, i won't spoil it but uh <laughs> and uh next i watched uh zaid aftab's uh running away from here which is his second feature zaid aftab is a filmmaker on youtube who we've been uh you know uh mutual admirers of each other's work for years now and uh a year or two ago he made a feature called the Printer and the Boy, which I've talked about on here, I think, which is a, just a fantastic uh, $0 COVID quarantine movie he made about him befriending his printer. And it's very, like, her adjacent. It's a great movie. And then he made Running Away From Here this year, which really surprised me. It, it, it meandered a bit. I think the opening montage was a bit weak, but it really came together by the end and did, like, a lot of cool things. The final 10 minutes really shocked me. Like there's a really beautiful sequence and then the the ending really hits. And uh, it's just a movie about a guy who finds out the world is ending, but everyone's trying to just keep doing their thing and not believe it or not think about it. And it feels like a very, yet again, a very grounded high, high concept idea that you could do on no money. You know, you can do a movie about the world ending without having to show the ending of the world. And, uh, you know, you could do it so cheaply and so simply just with yourself and a camera and some friends. And uh, I just love to see any movie made on YouTube and it's free. I'll link it in the description. Uh, free to watch on YouTube, running away from here. Uh, keep making movies, Zade, if you watch this. And um, last movie I watched was uh, Woman in the Dunes by Tessie Hagera. I, I'm probably butchering that, but it's a, it's a beloved classic, uh, Criterion Collection classic. <laughs> I know it came out way before Criterion existed, but anyways, uh, it's a Japanese movie about a man who gets trapped uh, in this this small house in this in this dune near a village where they're trapping him to use him for some purpose uh, I won't spoil it but it's just such a good claustrophobic like chamber piece about this man and this woman and the battle of the sexes and and the things we go through to to uh, you know the Stockholm syndrome things we go through in our life where we have to grow to love and accept things that otherwise might be unacceptable but uh yeah it's a it was such a tense movie and it's like two and a half hours but it never felt too long because it needed that time to really make you feel trapped but uh yeah i'm glad i finally watched it it's a, one of my friends in new york's favorites so um i i was glad to watch it i think it's one that i'll revisit at some point some movies just feel like so well crafted that if you watch them in a slightly wrong head space, you feel like you gotta revisit them at some point. I think that's very much the case for Woman in the Dunes. But uh, yeah, strongly recommend exploring Japanese film. There's so many good ones. Uh, you know, Kurosawa and Ozu are obvious, and then Juzo Atami I've talked about here before. But uh, yeah, just so much great film from Japan. And I wanna get into the guy who did House. I forget his name off the top of my head, but I've heard everything past house is like amazing and emotional and crazy and abstract and I wanna see more of his. So yeah, uh, de definitely uh, definitely check out Woman in the Dunes for a really tense like parable about life and about about how, how life forces us to accept things and, and uh, yeah. And uh, thanks for watching this video. I didn't watch many movies. I hope this casual style is fun to watch as well. Uh, and thanks, Karsten, for letting me rip you off, even though I didn't ask. <laughs> but uh, I love movies. I love you guys. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.